Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Tali Markajani and today I'm going to talk to you guys about food sensitivity testing and how to heal the gut. Levels of inflammation in the gut can trigger the immune system, which can then set off an inflammatory cascade that has the potential to cause diseases and interfere with other tissues such as our blood vessels leading to cardiovascular disease, our brain leading to mental health conditions, our thyroid leading to autoimmune thyroid conditions, our other immune cells leading potentially to blood cancers, and so on. Abnormal reactions to food include things like food intolerances, food allergies, and food sensitivities. They can cause digestive issues or lead to systemic inflammation that can trigger an autoimmune reaction. Food allergies are when the intake of food results in an activation of antibodies called IgE antibodies resulting in the release of histamine. They result from a tiny exposure to a food. The reaction is immediate and often life-threatening in the case of anaphylaxis, for example. IgE reactions are tested with a skin prick test, so different antigens, different substances will be placed on the skin of the inside of your forearm to see if there's an immune reaction. They're often related to environmental allergies and hives. People who suffer from food allergies notice a reaction right away, and they may have to carry an EpiPen with them wherever they go, just in case they're exposed to something like peanuts, for example. Food intolerances result when an enzyme is missing that helps to digest a certain substance in the body. So lactose intolerance results when the enzyme lactase is missing from our digestive system. The symptoms cause our diarrhea and bloating, flatulence, and these are all due to the buildup of fluid in the colon as a result of an increase in lactose that the body can't break down. Intolerances are not immune related. They can, however, trigger an immune reaction if the protein that are in the food are causing more inflammation in the gut. Food sensitivities are another thing entirely. So they're classified as a type three hypersensitivity reaction. So food allergies are classified as a type one hypersensitivity reaction. Remember that food allergies are mediated by IgE antibodies and histamine. Type three food sensitivities are mediated by an antibody called IgG. Type three food sensitivities are often delayed and can occur hours to days after ingesting the food, which makes them very hard to pinpoint what food might be causing the problem. So even if you're tracking your food intake for a number of days, it can be hard to understand which food is causing the reaction because sometimes it can be a combination of foods and sometimes you might not experience symptoms till hours to days after ingesting the food. Ig G food sensitivities are caused by antigen antibody complexes. So our IgG antibodies are, are created and, and stuck onto different particles, usually proteins within the food that we're sensitive to. These antigen antibody complexes get stuck in tissues and they start to trigger the immune system to react, re resulting in the release of inflammatory cytokines and other immune mediators and antibodies that start attacking the body's tissues. The symptoms of IgG antibodies can be diverse because as I said, inflammation is the seat of many different diseases, but really common symptoms are IBS and gut issues, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, headaches and chronic pain, arthritis, joint pain, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, obesity and weight gain, depression, anxiety, eczema, Acne and autoimmune conditions such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis can also be caused by food sensitivities. When a food that causes the IgG sensitivity is, is removed, the antigen antibody complexes are degraded and inflammation eventually subsides and symptoms are resolved. Once the root cause is treated, the, the disease state can be treated essentially. For, there's an example of this in, in popular media right now where a famous university professor, Dr. Peterson's daughter, Michaela Peterson, who suffered from juvenile arthritis and severe depression throughout her life, underwent an elimination diet where she removed various potential food sensitivities from her diet and actually resolved all of her symptoms. So she, she went off her antidepressant medication and all of her arthritis medication. And you can read about her story below. I'll, I'll put a link to a video about it. There are two ways to uncover a food sensitivity. So the first is the gold standard elimination diet, like Michaela Peterson did, where foods are selected and removed. So either on a rotational basis, so first, for example, removing gluten and then taking out dairy and then taking out eggs and then trying soy or all at once. So you take out all of those foods and you eat a very clean anti-allergenic diet for a few months and wait till all your symptoms resolve. Then foods are reintroduced systematically and symptoms are documented. So you start to reintroduce wheat on a daily basis a few times a day and you track and see what symptoms, if your symptoms come back. So some cons to this approach are the difficulty and the attention that must be paid 
to the removal of foods. You have to be very strict with your diet and you have to be very careful in reintroducing food so that you can document which food is causing the reaction. There's also the fact that it can be very hard to isolate a specific food and that all, not all foods that one reacts to might be removed. So there might be another food in there such as almonds or coconut that you're reacting to that haven't been removed because they're not common foods that people react to. The second approach is the IgG food sensitivity test that analyzes the blood for IgG antibodies against a certain number of foods. So the approach is simpler because the test simply observes the foods that are causing an immune reaction in your body and then gives you the information you need to remove them for a few months to calm down inflammation and treat symptoms. However, the immune system is dynamic and so the results can vary depending on how active your immune system is at the time of testing, whether you're using immunosuppressive drugs, whether you're under a significant amount of stress, which can impair the immune system, or how often you've been eating the certain food, the, the food that is activated. So for example, if you've been avoiding gluten for a period of time, it may not register in the test. The IgG sensitivity test also doesn't show IgE reactions. So if you know that you have an allergy to peanuts and you do an IgG sensitivity test and peanuts don't show up, it's not that the test failed, it's simply that the test was looking for IgG antibodies, whereas you have an, an allergy to peanuts that shows up in your Ig. E antibodies. So the food sensitivities is not looking for allergic reactions, it's not looking for allergies, it's looking for food sensitivities mediated by IgG. It's looking at I the levels of IgG in the body. If you're lactose intolerant, on the other hand, cow's milk may also not show up on the test because remember how I said that lactose intolerance is not related to the immune system but to a deficiency in the, in the lactase enzyme that breaks down lactose in the body. So you may be sensitive to dairy, you may even be allergic to dairy, again, which won't show up in the food sensitivity test, and you may also be lactose intolerant, but those things are not necessarily related. They can occur independently. In the case of leaky gut, where there's a lot of intestinal permeability due to inflammation, which can be caused by antibiotic use, certain drug medication use, binge drinking, chronic stress, and to make matters more complicated, can be caused by a food sensitivity. So in the case of intestinal impermeability or leaky gut, you may notice that if you do the IgG sensitivity test, a lot of foods show up that your, your body is reacting to, that your immune system is reacting to. So this might mean that taking out all of these foods that you're reacting to is the first step in a lengthy process of healing the gut. It's likely that one of those foods or two or a few, a handful of those foods is the primary culprit and which is causing a situation of intestinal permeability, which is then resulting in you reacting to a whole host of different foods. So the steps involved are removing the foods that your immune system is reacting to, healing the gut using a variety of different techniques, and looking for further root causes as to why the gut might be so inflamed, and then slowly reintroducing the foods to find out what you might be reacting to. And this might involve doing another IgG food sensitivity test to see if you're still reacting to all of those different foods. Cross reactions can also occur, and so cross reactions happen when the immune system reacts to one protein that's found maybe in a food or in the environment, so something like pollen, and the, the antibodies that are attacking that substance in the environment or food uh, also, because they look similar, attack an another substance or food. So an example of this is someone with a latex allergy may have immune reactivity to avocados because the antigens in latex and the antigens in avocados although they are two completely different substances look similar to one another and so someone with a latex allergy may be experiencing when they look at their food sensitivity test high levels of IgG antibodies against avocados and they're only, they, they, they find that they only react to avocados when they've been exposed to latex. So it's not a true IgG sensitivity, but a cross reaction that's happening. So they can eat avocados as long as they make sure that they stay well away from latex. So an example of a food sensitivity test I have here. The food sensitivity test looks at either 120 foods or 200 different foods and it categorizes them to elevated, borderline, or low reactivity. And that's depending on the concentration of antibodies in your blood. In this example test, you see that the foods are divided up into food groups, so dairy, grains, fruit, and the amount of antibodies, as well as where they fall in the elevated borderline or low range, are, are highlighted in different colors. On the fourth and sixth pages, the, the foods are divided up based on how elevated they are. So in this case, the, the person is reacting to casein, which is the protein found in dairy. It's reacting to nectarines, gliadin, and all different kinds of foods. 
So this person, if this is their immune sensitivity test, their, their food sensitivity test, would consult with their naturopathic doctor after getting these results and figure out a plan to eliminate those foods, which figure out which foods might be cross reactions, which foods may be a result of a leaky gut, and work to heal the gut barrier and take out those foods and then slowly reintroduce them to figure out what a true sensitivity is, as well as taking other measures to lower inflammation in the body. As Hippocrates says, all disease begins in the gut. And as a Facebook meme says, the road to health is paved in good intestine. So I believe in the power of a healing the gut to heal the immune system, to heal the mind and body. And food sensitivity testing is a viable and practical way that you can go about doing that to uncover the foods that you might be reacting to and to calm inflammation down at the root. My name is Dr. Talia Markajani and I work in Bloor West Village in Toronto.